All right, so in the last episode, we got the happy path for creating a user up and running. But now, of course, we need to handle failed validation. Okay, first up, let's add a little link here to create a user. So we'll visit user slash index. And yeah, there's that h1. So why don't we add our link here? And that'll go to user slash create, right? And we'll say new user. Okay, why don't we make it blue? And if we have a look, yeah, maybe it's a little too big and it should go right over here. Okay, let's make it smaller. And then I'm gonna wrap this whole thing within a div, reformat. And then on this wrapper alone, we'll make this a display of flex, align it to the center. And then we probably need to push this away from the heading a little bit. So maybe margin left of two. All right, how's that look? Pretty good, maybe three, and you know what, it's fine. So now we at least have a link to create a new user. Okay, so think about it. If I now switch over to user slash create, we have some automatic browser validation, and that's because I added this required attribute. So what this means is it physically won't let me submit the form or trigger that submit event if I haven't filled anything out. Have a look. And that's useful, but again, remember, you can never exclusively depend on browser or client-side validation. You still have to do that second layer validation on the server side. And that's because, of course, the user can always bypass the front end entirely. So for things like this, they are nice to have. So they're little helpers, but the point is you can never depend on them. Okay, so to demonstrate that, temporarily, I'm going to remove that required attribute. From there, there, and right up here. Okay, reformat. Now, if I come back and refresh and I try to submit the form, mm, we don't get any feedback at all. So let's try one more time, but this time with the network tab open. Submit, and we did make the request, but we got a 302 redirect back to this page. Let's see, we made our post request. We didn't send any relevant data through and then we got a redirect response. But notice now, because inertia will automatically share the errors, we can see that the validation failed. The name is required, the email is required, the password is required. So it looks like everything is rendering properly. We just have to conditionally display the errors. All right, let's do it. What if we add it to start maybe right down here? I might say v if, and how do we look into those errors? Well, I'll show you two ways. First, we can look into the page component, into the props, into the errors, and then look for an actual property name. So page, props, errors, dot name. So if that's not empty or null, then let's set the text equal to that. Then we'll set a class of maybe red and extra small, maybe italic, whatever you want. And actually, maybe we should also push it down from the input just a little bit. Okay, let's give it a shot. So one more time, I refresh, I submit it, and now we have feedback. Cool. So we could extract this into its own little helper component, but for now, I'm just gonna duplicate it, and that's okay. So this would be for the email. And then finally, this would be for any validation related to the password. All right, let's see. There we go, that's what we want. So why don't we set it up where the name passes? There we go, now only these two fail. Let's make that pass as well. And everything is working just the way we want. Okay, so that would be fine. Another way, if you don't wanna reach into the page component, which I don't see any issue there, but you could also declare it as a prop. So again, we're using the composition API, so we would do define props, and I could accept the errors here. So now we sort of have access to them locally. That would allow me to then replace every occurrence of page.props.errors with simply errors, like that. It's up to you. Come back to Firefox, refresh, give it one more shot, and it still works. Okay, so now, yeah, the best of both worlds would be to have some automatic browser validation. 
right there and here. But then, of course, you have server-side validation on the back end. So you have two forms of production. And if that does fail, then we redirect back to that page. View will automatically re-render it. And in those cases, we'll display a little bit of feedback to the user. All right, but we're not yet done with forms. In the next episode, let's have a look at Inertia's form helper, which is even cooler.